Welcome in everyone, how you guys doing? If you guys inside that subscribe, like, share, thank you for tuning in. You could be elsewhere, but you're here with me right now, so I really appreciate it. Um, we're going to get into this um, breakdown of 616 in LA. I've had so many people tell me to react to this. Um, I'm going to be learning a whole bunch of stuff that I did not catch in 616. Friends said this guy did a crazy breakdown. Bro, you need to react to this. And I'm like, okay, 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 I will. Yeah, I think it's about <clears throat> about an hour long. So I don't know, I think I should break it up into two pieces. Part one and part two. See how I feel. Um, which is better because, you know, after a while, when I watch a video, after 40 minutes, I'm so... But yeah, let's get straight into this. Um, Kendrick, 616 in LA, this actually explained. I'm going to put the link to the original video in the description. What's the dirt? I'll add him as well. Plus, I'll put down my playlist for Kendrick versus Drake Beef. See all the videos I've reacted to. Please go have a look. And yeah, let's go. All right, guys. I've been eagerly chipping away at the breakdowns for all the recent diss tracks that we got. And today we're looking at 616 in LA. Now, if you haven't watched my other breakdowns on these records, please make sure to do that as it should offer some good insight into where we're at in the beef up to this point. And I promised my nephew I'd do this, so huge shout out to Marty. Bless Marty that. wants to be a YouTuber someday. And That's if he up. wants to do it, That's what's he up. can do it. Don't let anyone tell you that he can't do it, okay, buddy? <laughs> so Let's right go. off Let's rip, go. it was on Euphoria <laughs> where Kendrick alluded to going back to back on Drake. And that's exactly what he did on this record, releasing 616 in LA just three days later. Back to back, I like that record. I'm gonna get back to that for the record. And this was something that I predicted over a month ago before any of the disses dropped when all we had was the like that record. I think Kendrick's gonna use Drake's own angle against him. Yeah, they did with And me. he'll Mill. probably even reference back to back while he does it. Mm. So before we even begin, we have to take a close look at the title of the track as there's several meanings. First and foremost, the one that will jump out to any Drake fan is Kendrick's usage of the timestamp format. Mm. Drake is synonymous with timestamp titles oh, and it's on really... these records where he gets super busy with the pen. Whenever someone tries to- I never really clocked it because Drake does use a lot of timestamps. So this was Kendrick's kind of way of doing timestamp on his album 616 but not like i think drake does to the hour he did like 616 so extra 16 minutes but yeah let's go tell me that drake can't rap i'll always tell him check out one of those records then tell me that he can't rap mm. so this was a very strategic and petty angle from kendrick as he attempts to taint drake's long-running series even since this track dropped we've seen multiple people claim that kendrick's version of the timestamp was way better than any of Drake's, and this very well could have been Kendrick's goal. And let's be realistic, Drake still has by far the best timestamp records. Like, he still, he still lays claim to that. Now, as far as the other meanings behind this title, there are several theories bouncing around, but I'm gonna give you guys the most significant meaning and truly break down why that is. Okay, let's it go. was on let's June 16th, 2011, that Kendrick met Drake for the very first time. In a double XL magazine, Kendrick described the meeting saying, I did a show in Toronto on June 16th, my first show in Toronto. I think it was the same night we were going back to the hotel and he hit my phone. I guess hey. he got the word that I was in town. He was there for the night working on the album and he said he wanted to meet up. We met up, chilled out and got the vibe. Okay. Now remember the Buried Alive track that mm. Kendrick did for Drake was based on this moment when they first met. June 16th. June is the sixth month, the 16th day of June, 616. Yo, let's go, let's go. On let's Buried go. Alive, Kendrick reflects on this meeting with Drake, mentioning how Drake introduced him to the glitz and glamour of celebrity life. Kendrick described being picked up in a Maybach by Drake and states that Drake brought him to a fancy place to eat where he talked to Kendrick about women and the industry. Okay. However, right. on the right. track, Kendrick truly struggles with the idea of becoming famous as he's afraid it will change him for the worse, but he also realizes that this type of lifestyle comes with the territory. Okay. Now, yep. what's extremely critical to point out is how Kendrick ends off the track. The reason why the highlight was when he said you belong to the people when you outside. So he clearly okay. says that's what he, he said. said. Now, who is he? 
Who's Drake. he talking about? So dig a shovel full of money, full of power, full of pussy, full of fame, and bury yourself alive. Then I died. Mm. What most people fail to realize is that these last few lines is not Kendrick speaking to himself, but Drake having a conversation with, with Kendrick. Yeah. And this is the part that's really important. When asked by Double XL to explain the meaning of why the track ended like this, Kendrick said the following. At the end of the verse, that's him in the conversation. Him telling me that you must accept this lifestyle, lifestyle. and it's up to you how far you're going to go with it or how much you're going to let in. Uh -huh. I then acknowledge what he's saying when I say, then I, I died. died, which leaves it hanging on the audience trying to figure out where I would go with it. Uh -huh. Will I let it taint me or destroy me? Or will I know how to deal with it? Uh -huh. So, I mean, it's on this night, June 16th, where Drake is giving Kendrick a pep talk. About fame, the industry. Same short, right? Before Drake even played <clears throat> the track, man's called out, yo, 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 K Dot just dropped. What? Yeah, 616 in LA, you know. Drake's spider senses were tingling. 616. Yo, bro, why that date? No way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's go, man. Let's go. How to deal with it. This Buried Alive interlude is important because Drake gives Kendrick a choice. He tells him that fame will come and that it's up to him on how he deals with it. But the thing is, Kendrick wasn't the only person who needed to make this choice. This whole thing rings true for Drake as well because Drake had the exact same choice to make. And after Take Care, his fame exploded and he was completely consumed by it. It should have been The weekend's fame exploded. Cause our whole album was The weekend's work that you stole. It was meant to be part of his House of Balloons edition. You know what I'm saying? And I'm a big fan of The weekend, so this is why I'm like. Drake's lifestyle in 2024 hmm. isn't that much different from the lifestyle that he showed Kendrick back in 2011. Drake is still living that same old rapper's life it's just on a far bigger scale. Now, in the case of Kendrick, he ended off the record making us wonder which way he'd go with it, and today, we now know what choice he made. Okay. Unlike Drake, yep. Kendrick did not get fame, buried the by the temptations of money, power, pussy, and fame. Yep. Both artists took an entirely different route, and the Buried Alive interlude is important because it acts as a full circle moment. By Kendrick using the date June 16th in the title, Drake knows exactly what he's referring to, and bringing this up 13 years later mm. is extremely powerful. Yep. Kendrick proved to have the strength to resist the temptations that Drake warned him about, and Drake himself was weak and couldn't do the same. So he really couldn't take his own fucking advice. You out here giving advice, but you can't take your own advice. You know what I'm saying? Like, trying to act like, you know... <clears throat> the elder in the industry who's trying to steer the newcomers into the right path and really and truly how what weight does your word have if you're not living by it i listen to shit you say now i gotta say drake flips this narrative really well on family matters but that one's coming up next so when we get a track like euphoria all these years later the shit that he's saying to Drake is all the more impactful. I'm allergic to the lame shit, only you like being famous. Real talking, yeah, yeah. Fans might mm. take lines like this one lightly, no. but it holds a lot of depth because Kendrick knows that when he first met Drake, Drake had plans of keeping a level head, as that's what their conversation was about. Yep. This is only further confirmed in the Double XL interview when he talks about Drake and the concept of the Buried Alive track. I felt like he was in a space now where vanity's everywhere and he had his hands on every bit of it and he's trying to escape that. But what's clear today is Drake lost his fight. I mean, he, he didn't escape it at all. Nope. It's a 2004 Acura TSX. Yeah, he it's kind of, car for like a he gave into the fame. As opposed to money, a Mercedes, a power. BMW. I think that's women, personally. And this is exactly why Kendrick uses June 16th in the title and why it's so significant. It's by far the most significant use of the title. Yo. 616, the day that they first met, the first collaboration mm. they did, Drake's sophomore album, an Yo, entire record was made about that moment. Now we're 13 years later, and it's coming up again. And, uh, and we ain't even start talking about the song. We are just talking about the fucking name of the, 
the title, the name of the fucking song. We ain't even gotten into the actual track, you know. Yo, K Dot is methodical. He is a mastermind in the way he lays layers. Now, I'm going to have to reconstruct my top 10, maybe. No, he was already my top 10. My top 5 list. <clears throat> And I mean my overall list, not, not today rappers, you know what I mean? Because today he's there in the top three. I think number one, I'll have J. Cole number two. I might have to talk about Big Sean being number three because, you know, Drake, you got ghostwriters. You can't enter that conversation, bro. That's what I'm saying. You just can't enter that conversation. But overall, yo, if this, yo, this is a different angle at coming at beef that we've never seen. We ain't even gotten into the damn track yet. We're here talking about the name of the song. 616 in LA, you know. <laughs> what the fuck am I hearing? Yo, and like go. I said, Drake knew exactly what he was doing with this title. Because just days after 616 in LA dropped, Drake posted a Buried Alive Part 2 parody song where he mocks Kendrick and flips the narrative again. What? If you in a pine box... That's how you felt in 2011, why we wasting time? Dreams come true, Cody, this is where you die. Yo, bro, you trying to tell me he let our fucking parody while in the midst of this beef? I, I didn't know about this. Yo, fam, if you would have taken a bit more time and energy to go put into the fucking beef and not into this bullshit, yeah, maybe you might have had a little bit more of a chance. No, no, not, not with like us. You, you wouldn't have had no fucking chance. PDF files. Wop, wop, wop. <laughs> Yo, I don't... <laughs> Yeah, let's go. Let's fucking go. Come on, hit the like button. However, 616 in LA could possibly be in reference to allegations of Drake being involved with younger women. As you guys know, Drake goes by the six god and 16-year-old girls for him might just be prime real estate. That is the allegations. Allegations. PDF now, this is file. only further supported Yo. when we look at a young woman by the name of Bella Harris. Bella is an LA-based model who even at the age of 13 stood at a height of 5 foot 10 Damn. and she skipped the teen division of modeling and moved directly up to the women's division. So quote unquote though, let's see. I understand it. She's a bit well figured for her age, if that's what they're saying. So, so kind of fitting her into 13 year old garments, so style of fashion might be a bit too much for young kids. 13 and under. I totally understand. Especially if she's, you know, um, <clears throat> so they moved up to the young women. But then is it right moving up to the younger females now? Because then she's wearing stuff which is even more revealing and for bigger women. But then can't take away from the fact that she's a baby. She's a baby. She's a baby. She's still a baby. She's a baby. Beautiful, but still a baby. Like... So get this, at the age of 13, this child is being, like, categorized and showcased mm. as a, a full-grown woman. Yeah, not right. I don't, I don't I like that. When I was about 13, I was really tall. I was, like, 5'9", and everyone's like, oh, my God, how old are you? Um, I'm 12 and 13. And back in 2018, the 12. internet went crazy as no. Drake was spotted with a then 18-year-old Bella taking pictures that resembled that of a happy couple. This shit feels like teenage fever. No. However, Drake has ties with Bella that dates back to 2016, and given Kendrick's angle throughout this beef, I think this is what he's talking about. Hold up. This is a picture of Drake... 2018. 2016. She must have been 16 years old. 26... 16... Boogeyman, you need to stop, bruv. Baba Yaga, bruv. Oh, no. You, you trying to tell me we here on Not Like Us and now we still coming back to 616 in LA? Yo. Y'all don't fuck with Kendrick, you know? Yo, Kung Fu Kenny is serious, bruv. I'm going to have to redo my, my top five list. I ain't joking. After this now. Oh, shit. Man. M is one of the goats, but not even M is doing layers like this, bro. 
I'm telling you now, <clears throat> ain't nobody doing layers like this, and we ain't even start talking about the fucking track. We here on 616 in LA. Get the fuck out of here. Let's go, Nick man. and Bella at Rihanna's anti-world tour. As you can see, the date of this photo was May 5th, 2016, and when we look at Rihanna's tour history, she was indeed in LA for that date. <clears throat> Then when we look at the fact that Bella had literally just turned 16, mm. just one month before this photo nah. was taken, it's all the more compelling. No, no. 616 in LA, Drake the Six Gob was indeed with a 16-year-old girl in LA. And I mean, Kendrick said he had five more diss tracks in stock. And I believe him. I think he was about to get far deeper into this shit. Had this thing kept going. What the? Furthermore, Kendrick dropped Yo. the record at 6.16 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, which is 6.16 in L.A. Then we got the fact that June 16th is Tupac's birthday. And considering that we've seen this a few fun. references to Pac in this beef already, this one seems to make sense. Kendrick, we need ya. Next, June 16th is Father's Day, and mm. we have seen a slew of references with Bruh. respect to Drake and being a shitty dad. And also jabs towards the fact that Drake's own father was absent. You don't know nothing about that. And of course, Drake also executive produced the hit show Euphoria and the first episode of that now, show. If all these are true, bro. This is just this some this some <clears throat> This is new to the world of rap this is. We've never seen this. Aired Yo, on June 16th. And epic. that's as far as I'm going to go with the title. Yeah, yeah, There's a yeah, lot of theories shit. out there. But these are the ones that make sense they, to me. They, they with up. all that said, they let's move up. on to the artwork, which is simply a cropped out version it's, of the artwork that we would see on me. We still ain't gotten to the fucking track yet. Not, not, no problem at all. I'm here for this. I'm fucking loving this. But like, just to show you how in-depth k Dot put thought into this, bro, we still ain't hit the fucking track yet the grams where kendrick allegedly had an inside mole collecting drake's personal items and feeding him information and this whole thing with the artwork and these items like this turned into a this really grew legs after it turned into this whole other conversation so we've got the title we've got the artwork now let's move to the beat selection first and foremost the track is co-produced by jack ananoff who is a pop producer most known for his work with Taylor Swift. This is likely a troll on Drake's previous claims on Taylor Made, where he insinuated that Taylor Swift had all this power over Kendrick. Now, what I feel Kendrick is really trying to drive home here by using this producer is that just like the culture of hip hop, even high level people within the industry itself do not like Drake and are more than happy to help bring him down. Imagine if Taylor Swift was there. Behind closed doors, you know what I'm saying? On the phone with Kendrick, like, yo, take him the fuck down. K Dot, man, destroy him. You understand me? Like, real talking. Like, I, I, I just to see, like, them, them fight scenes in anime. JJK, Jujutsu Kaisen. You know, when, you know, um, the guy's getting jumped by um, two of the guys over here. Um, my whole, my whole brain just went blank. Yeah. And you can hear in the background, and all I can hear is Taylor Swift's <laughs> voice. Fight back! Fight back! Fight back! And they're just getting pummeled to the ground. You understand me? Like, uh, oh, let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> I think Kendrick's just leaning into it. Like, yeah, I, I am friends with Taylor, and she's co-signing this dish. She doesn't like you. Her producer doesn't mm -hmm. like you. Nobody likes you. Like, I, this is a tailor-made diss for you. Yep, the tailor instrumental made. samples mm -hmm. Al Green's song, What a Wonderful Thing Love Is, and Drake's Uncle Teeny Hodges is credited as playing guitar on that record. Mm. However, what makes it even more impressive okay. is the fact that Kendrick that. sampled Teddy Pendergrass on mm -hmm. Euphoria, and now he's sampling Al Green, and they both had an album together called Back to Back Hits, feeding even more into Kendrick's claims that he was going back to back, back on Drake. To back. And people say that Kendrick fans are reaching all the time, but this is clearly thought out. I mean, they just, these records were very, very well planned. Come on. Now. With all that said, you, we can now right finally here? get into the lyrics right. of the song. Actually, I'm just kidding. No lyrics yet, because did, did you hear that noise? Yeah. Like, what in the fuck is that? 
People were claiming that this sound was from the V12 liposuction machine, which was something that Kendrick referenced on Euphoria. Mm. But when you really listen to that machine in action, it doesn't sound like this at all. No, it don't. It's soft though. And the main reason why this video took so long is because I got extremely subject stuck <laughs> on finding out what the sound was. First, I thought yeah, that I it could like be a money sometimes. counter. It bothers me. I can't sleep until I figure it out. I thought maybe, maybe it's a lie detector test. Mm -mm. Nah. Then I was thinking it was one of those old 16 mil projectors. Nah. Then I was thinking maybe it could be a life support machine. I was manipulating an equalizer, changing the pitch, adding plugins, still couldn't narrow it down. And if it wasn't for my girlfriend, I would probably still be doing it right now because she had to tell me, look, Matt, it's time to move on. <laughs> it drove me crazy because there's no way that Kendrick's looping that sound for as long as he did. And it means nothing. Like, it means something. And Drake's probably the only one who's going to pick up on it. However, something I do feel fairly confident about is that if you really listen to the beat closely, Kendrick chooses to chop up the Al Green sample and loops it so that it sounds like he's saying, Boy Wonder. Ain't Drake call him, don't Drake call himself the boy? I look at the boy, like. Now you gotta remember, this track is in response to the Push Ups record where Drake sampled the drop from Who Kid. Mm. Who Kid? Kid! Hey. And as we know now, this drop turned out to have a hidden message that flew over all of our heads as Drake will later announce that Kendrick's child might not be his. I heard that one of them little kids might be day free. Mm. And for Bullshit. that reason, I feel like it's on this track where Kendrick is using one of Drake's close producers to also send some sort of message. By using this little sample, I feel like Kendrick is trying to get inside Drake's head to cast doubt on who the mole could be in his camp. Mm. Drake commonly refers to himself as the boy, Man. and in this case, I think Kendrick is at- And I'll just say that. I like to think I'm up to date with some of the stuff, you know what I'm saying? I'm old school, but yeah, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, the boy. Boy wonder, bruh. Yo, so many different layers here, man. Man got subliminals on top of subliminals inside of subliminals. Oh, what the f but yet you know it's you he talking to. She. Asking Drake to think. Kendrick got the boy wondering. Right. Like, I wonder who's leaking all my info. I wonder who's the mole. Like, boy, I wonder who's doing <laughs> all this shit. <laughs> got the boy wondering for so real. So right off though, rip, bro. Kendrick references Drake's track Survival. Now, Survival came at a time when Drake was fresh off his loss from Pusha T, and he was still heavily beefing with Pusha and Kanye mm. at this time. As you guys remember, Drake allegedly had a career-ending red button disc for Pusha and Kanye, but he held it back, and it's on the survival track where he appears to Bullshit, make mention bro. to wanting to Talking drop shit. it. I was about to Whatever. I thought about it. Whatever. Settling to talk about it. So Drake leaves a blank in this record, and it's up to the listener to interpret what this could mean. But the way that I see it, mm. he was either talking about putting a hit on Pusha and Kanye, here, or bro. he just really wanted to drop that track, but it was so scathing that it was unsettling for him to even think about where he was about to go with it. Simply because it, it crossed the line of music. Either way, the common denominator in this case with respect to Kendrick is the fact that Drake is now saying the exact same thing to him. Again, Drake is making claims that he has some lethal secret Whatever, threatening man. to drop it. <laughs> this ain't if, you, if you did have it, you should have already dropped it. Too late right now. We don't want to hear it. Bullshit. I call it bullshit. Everything I know don't wake the demon up. However, Kendrick's own senses are telling him that Drake is lying mm -hmm. as he claims that he thinks, blah, blah, smells, blah. and sees the bullshit coming. And just like the alleged held back push of this, Kendrick claims he sees no fire. I feel like he's saying you were bullshitting then. Now you're trying to pull the same stunt again. You're full of it. So right away here, any seasoned Drake fan will tell you that when it comes to timestamp records, Kendrick is clearly matching Drake's subject matter stylistically. Is there more to life than going on trips to Dubai? Yachts on the 4th of July, G5 soaring the skies. 
Roll big body, wide body, Calabasas, roll winder, sun shining, uh, wax Calabasas. tires. Well, here's the thing. I don't mm. think Kendrick's rapping from his own perspective here at all. I think he's rapping as if he were Drake. 13 years ago, Kendrick ended off the Buried Alive verse speaking in the perspective of Drake, yep. and I feel he's now circling back to okay. do that again. Off right, sun seeker at the marina. Fuck a phantom. I like to buy yes when I get the fever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, rapping in the perspective of Drake, real, he says off white sun seeker. Now, this would be in reference to one of Drake's close friends, Virgil, who not only had the designer that's brand the off white, but also during a 2022 Louis Vuitton fashion show, the background music for that show was an album by Tyler the Creator called Sunseeker. And this was Virgil's baby. This was his show. He, he directed it. And rest a peace to Virgil. Mm -hmm. Secondly, a Sunseeker at the marina is in reference to a company called Sunseeker, which is a builder of luxury yachts. Okay. But in the next line, things only get deeper. In the second line, Kendrick, from the perspective of Drake, claims that he's tired of buying phantoms and now likes to buy yachts when he gets the fever. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, you got to think about this. Kendrick does not rap about flaunting a lavish no, he lifestyle. Does not. No, he, he doesn't does not, own a yo. yacht. He's not one for buying yachts. This is just so far outside of the... Humble. So when you hear him talking like this, yeah, definitely. He's talking from Drake's perspective as if he was Drake. Subject matter in his music and what he represents. And that is because he is rapping as if he were Drake. I don't believe that this first chunk of the verse is from Kendrick's perspective at all. A Phantom is a model of car from Rolls Royce that Drake not only owns multiple variations of, but he's mentioned the Phantom in at least 10 different tracks over the years, maybe even more. Now I'm in the Rolls with Illuminated Angel. All my Rolls Royce is Rolls got a Royce different series, body. Though. I got no... What the ghost, now what shit about is to say about the Rolls? Leg, the hey, Phantom, man, she hit. <laughs> However, Kendrick is painting it as if the Phantom is no longer scratching the itch for Drake. Mm. He needs to go bigger, which is exactly what he did when he rented the Ocean Corel yacht in 2022. Okay. No one will say for sure how much Coral Ocean is Receipts worth. Receipts right here. <laughs> well north of $100 million. When Drake rented this yacht, he was going all over the place. Like, he was traveling everywhere. Now, here's where things take a turn and get a lot darker. Following up on his previous line about yachts, he claims that he likes to buy yachts when he gets the fever, mm -hmm. and the fever is another builder of luxury yachts. Okay. This is where it goes left. The Sun Seeker has another line of yachts called the Predator, and as we know, Drake has a song called Teenage. Coincidence? I think not. Y'all hit me down in the comments and tell me what you think so far. Are these all coincidences, you know what I mean? Or y'all feel that, you know, there is some just truth behind these? I'm thinking that with every conspiracy theory, so people like to call them, you know, the stands and the haters, um, there's always some truth behind it. Me, I'm just here thinking that these are just not too coincidental to be false. And Kendrick has already shown us how his brain works. And this here is just, man, Fever create a uh, yacht line that's called the Predator, bruh. I don't even know what to say no more, bruh. <laughs> Yo, there's no coming back. It's not even about taking the summer off. <clears throat> man, my boy needs to go to the Himalayan mountains, put on some orange robes, you know what I'm saying? Stay in a monastery, become a monk. Someone come back again, like in 10 years. <laughs> Fever. Now, where it gets crazy is when we look at Drake's relationship with Millie Bobby Brown. Nah. Here she is with Drake on a nah. yacht at the young age of 13. Nah. This photo was taken in 2017, shortly after his More Life album dropped, which had the track Teenage Fever, and coincidentally enough, the media was categorizing the More Life album as yacht rap. Mm. Now, to put the cherry on top, where was this picture taken at a marina? Think about it. Sunseeker has a yacht called The Predator. Drake's More Life album was being called Yacht Rap. It had a track called Teenage Fever. 
He's with a 13-year-old girl on a yacht, and in this picture, they're at a marina. This is not a coincidence at all. It's not. And Kendrick drops plenty Boy. of little clues here just in how he pronounces certain words. And if you pay attention to how he says, I like to buy yachts, he's actually making a reference to Dubai yachts. Yo. I like to buy yachts when I get the fever. Is there more to life than going on trips to Dubai? Yachts on the 4th of July. And back in 2015, Drake was very happy to announce that he was on a yacht in Dubai. And if you're familiar with Kendrick... Yo, fam. K, K dot, man. K dot, man. K dot, bro. You really came to end this man's career. No joke. No playing about. And you know the funny thing? Usually after last thing, we see a lot of press, press releases and press conferences and people out here... The only thing we seen after this whole thing was K dot at the um, that graduate graduation award ceremony. Yeah, that's it. He hasn't come out. He hasn't said nothing. He's kept quiet. Yo, bruh, the boogeyman. Don't know what Drake was smoking, but he needs to stop. Drake's <laughs> catalog. You'll know that he does shit like this a lot in his writing. Mm. Wine cooler, spill on my white t-shirt, the sightseer. So again, Kendrick is rapping as if he were Drake. Not only does Kendrick hardly ever drink, but when he does drink, it's exclusively wine. Mm. Yeah, I drink a little bit. A little bit. What's your preferred beverage? Uh, just wine. Like what about, have you ever... Now, there is a huge difference in wine and wine coolers. Most men do not drink wine coolers. I'm talking about fruity drinks with soda and tons of sugar. Kendrick uses little keywords like this to let the listener know that this is not his life we're talking about. Kendrick's not drinking wine coolers, guys. Uh, Drake is the guy that loves wine coolers. That's pretty much all he drinks. And what's even more interesting is how wine coolers became his beverage of choice in the first place. Were you drinking white wine spritzer? I was. That's my mm. drink of choice. It's basically my mother had a friend <clears throat> who um, I was always sort of, like, infatuated with. We used to go to her house and be poolside, and she used to, like fill up a white wine spritzer and she would like casually slide it and leave it there and then she'd just show up with another one and I always felt like she was trying to send me a message. <laughs> so I've kept that a consistent theme. Oh, we get of course it. she was trying to send, that's completely inappropriate. Yeah. How old were you? I don't know, like, I don't know, like 15. But it so I've kept that a consistent theme. It could have been innocent, but at the same time, did anything happen between a mother's friend and Drake? Because then Drake can be a victim. You know what I'm saying? Reenacting what has happened to him. Now he's doing it to younger females. Does not make it right, but hey, what do we know? Does anybody know any deep into, has he spoken about this? I mean, I, but then I don't give a fuck. When you reach a certain age, you know wrong is wrong. You know what I'm saying? You know wrong is wrong. You know. But still, like, his mama's friend. I was say it could have been innocent. Just, here you go, here you go. Like... But then if it wasn't, shit. Still, fuck no. And take a good guess at who else loves wine coolers. Wine coolers, yeah. Teenage uh, girls, right? Yeah, yeah, young teenage. Yeah, teenage girls, 18, 17, 16. Because wine coolers is like the equivalent to a cocktail. But cocktails are spirits, stronger. You know, so for wine, I guess it's, yeah, wine coolers. And coincidentally enough, with respect to this line, a 17-year-old Madison Beer attended Drake's Memorial Day party in 2016, and she shared the following story. I met him at What is she doing at the party? How did she even get through the gate? What's she doing there? How old? Man, I'm having special security outside. 21 and above. Lucky I don't add a couple of years onto that until you're 23, 24. I'm just saying. In that kind of lifestyle and you got bare people coming. But yeah, yeah, they'll be... You're taking the best. 21. You're 17, 18. Man, shit. Oh, hell no. I'm not playing those games. No, 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 no. Um, 17. Man, at least have the teen drop off of it. 
Actually, fuck? like two years ago at his Memorial Day party. Funniest thing about Drake is he drinks wine spritzers. Like that's all he drinks. Uh, I was like, can we go to the bathroom in your room? I was like, I just. Really I'm don't not even wait trying to go like, crazy. Yeah. I think I'm just a bit pissed off here because we've gone from the, the the Billy Bobby, you know that young girl, who was like, how old, whatever. She's still young. And then that baby, I forgot her name. There, the model. I think I'm just getting a bit pissed off right now. Yeah, so I'm just as angry with all the other ones that's passed, but like, bruh, really? Come on now. Come on now. Like, like, how many do we need to go through here? Like, Yeah, of course. And this girl had like a vodka cranberry or something in her hand and she tripped and fell and spilled all over Drake. Like, all over his like white sweatsuit. At this point in time, Madison had just turned 17 two months prior and this only acts as further proof that Millie Drake Bobby. seems to allow much younger girls at his parties. Madison claims that Drake loves wine coolers and then states that someone spilt the drink all over his white outfit. Kendrick seems to have been gathering this information about Drake for a very long time. And on this track, I feel like he's sending subtle reminders that most of us wouldn't catch. Fun fact though, his his house that he has, he has a bathtub that is literally the size of this room. And it's gigantic and so dope. I was like sitting in it, I was like, can I, can I just lay here and like chill? I even found some footage of this exact Drake Memorial Day party where you can tell that the women in attendance, to me, don't really- Man, they look like teenagers. Look right there, they look like fucking kids. Babies. None of them look past 17. None of them look past 17 years old. And then, you know, when you hear a court case come, people go, oh, they put it down to their security team or whoever it is at the front gate check-in ID. No, 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 fam. No, no, no. This is down to you. Are you making sure they are instructed and know what they should do? <clears throat> this ain't appropriate. They show up to the gate, turn them the fuck back, go back home. Yeah, yeah. What, ooh, it's nine, ten o'clock. It's past your bedtime. Go back home. What the fuck? They look like grown women. I mean, come on, guys. Like, I'm a fair man, but, like, I'm not even assuming here. Like, these are clearly teenagers, right? And when he talks about wine coolers, he, he's talking about shit like this. Look. Following up on the previous <laughs> line, Kendrick writes for Drake by calling himself a sightseer, mm -hmm. which is exactly what Drake was doing in 2022 when he rented that $50 million yacht. Yeah. Here he is in St. Bart's at a New Year's Eve yacht party, and what we can easily conclude about this party is that teenage girls were definitely in attendance because there's clear evidence of this happening. I got back from St. Bart's on Monday. So it was an after party that we got invited to. It was on the Vava. So many cool people there. We talked with Drake for a little bit. This girl was born on February 5th, 2004 which would mean she was only 17 years old during this yacht party. I was just in St. Bart's with Drake like and 17 is this. Models, isn't it? And I think that Kendrick knows something about these parties. Yeah. I do. Trifecta, money, morals, and culture, that's my leisure. In the second line, Kendrick says, trifecta, money, morals, and culture, that's my leisure. And again, this has nothing to do with Kendrick mm. as he continues to rap as Drake here. Okay. First off, the definition of a trifecta pertains to gambling on horses, where to win, you need to guess the three winning horses in order. Okay. That means that in the case money, of this line, money would come first, morals would come second, okay. and culture would be the last. last this is how we can easily rule Kendrick's own perspective out, oh, because as is money him. is definitely not his first priority. Blah, blah. Again, it's little things like this where it's clear to me that He's not rapping from his own perspective here. Come on, really, now. money really don't make me. I'm learning that now. You know, that's not really my um, my peace of mind having money. In the case of the line, as it pertains to Drake, money is seemingly at the forefront of everything that he does. Yep. He's willing to put aside morals and culture money to get and it. Pussy. This explains why morals and culture come in second yeah, and no. third place within the trifecta. And morals out the door. You know, people keep coming on and be like, man. How y'all be hating on Drake? You don't even know him. He don't even know you. You know, but as I'm saying, as a guy, as a man out here, you know what I'm saying? When you see that you have an individual out here trying to 
everything that walks. Well, not everything that walks. Let's put it this way now. Because there's a lot of guys out here like that. Yeah? But his way of trying to get at guys is by fucking their women. Fucking their exes, their links, their... Somebody looking at him the wrong way, he's going out his way to try and fuck your wife. Out his way to try and fuck your sister. Out his way to try to fuck your cousin. And he does this every time with everybody he has a disagreement with. Why is it every disagreement this man has is always him trying to fuck around with the next man's woman? Everyone. We've done Rick Ross. Rick Ross baby mom or whatever, and then he's inviting her over. Da, 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 da. Try to get at Whitney. You know what I'm saying? I, I can go right down the list. Let's not go through all of this, but Drake gets at everybody trying to fuck everybody's woman. Family member. Cousin. This has been his game. As a man, I can't trust you around. Can't have you in my camp. Can't be friends with you. I'm just saying. We all know somebody similar like that, and we don't have them close by. We don't talk to them. So when people go, how could you hate Drake? I don't like the person he is. They put out some good music here and there, but now we know it's Culture Vulture and it's fucking ghostwriting. Well, boy, I don't even know if it's really your music. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, those two <laughs> things will never really matter for Drake as money will always dictate his every move regardless. Mm. So, I mean, when we look at a trifecta by definition, like what it means, the line makes literally no sense pertaining to Kendrick. Yeah. My visa passport tatted, I show up in the visa. Once I again, visa. I'm not sure how hey. this would ever pertain to Kendrick, as he never raps about shit like this, mm. and there's no documented proof that he has ever been to a visa. Yeah, not visa, only that, a visa is known as the Let me stop you right there, bro, because you know I'm in the UK, and most of the UK have been to Ibiza. You know what I'm saying? We, we say Ibiza, even though it's Ibiza, but we say Ibiza. Um, Ibiza is a place for drugs, sex, and rock and roll. You know what I mean? And mostly of a younger crowd, but at the same time, dependent on the events, um, the concerts, whatever is happening. All the time of year, you can get an older crowd as well, too. You know, it's, it works both ways, depending on the time of year you go. Mostly a younger crowd, but at the same time, I Ibiza kind of attracts everybody who's on a party mindset. So, but yeah. Party capital of Europe, which doesn't really seem to be a place that fits into his lifestyle. When we look at how Kendrick structured and set up this first verse, it only makes sense from Drake's perspective as he was in Ibiza on that exact same yacht. And Drake has referenced Ibiza in his music many, many times. Grab her Lisa, bring her to Ibiza. A pill in Ibiza, so what? She took dick in Ibiza. We went to Ibiza. And this whole infatuation she? with, with how Ibiza, she? for Drake, this is new. He never talked about it before in his music. It's only these recent years where he's been bringing it up a lot. It's almost like Ibiza has become Drake's new favorite hub. And if you listen to how Kendrick enunciates this line, that's exactly what he says. That's your hub in Ibiza, your hub in Ibiza. And I don't know why Drake loves Ibiza so much, but maybe Kendrick does. And again, in very recent times, Drake referenced a tatted passport in his music. My visa passport tatted. I tatted your passport up. So this all ties and flows perfectly together in reference to Drake and how he lives his life. And given the fact that Kendrick rapped from Drake's perspective on Buried Alive, and this track is called 616 in LA, which was the date that they first met and the concept of that record, Kendrick is doing the same here. And the concept of the Buried Alive track is just as important for Family Matters, which we are doing next. Luke Kelly's dwellings in Brooklyn just to put me some pizza. Kendrick continues to replicate the subject matter that Drake showcases on these timestamp records. If you heard Drake say a line like this straight from his mouth, you wouldn't second guess it as it fits perfectly into the style into, of his pen. He nailed it. It is bang on how Drake raps on these tracks. Bang on. Luke Kelly's dwellings in Brooklyn just to put me some pizza. It's just the way he enunciates shit is very cryptic. Like he doesn't even say pizza. He says pizza. Just to put me some pizza. Mm -hmm. And book me some pizza is weird too. Like it, there's shit in here that Drake is only gonna get. Mm -hmm. And on Euphoria, remember, Kendrick Layers. said that he Layers. hates the way that Drake sneak disses people. I hate the way that you sneak diss. If I catch flight, it's gonna be direct. 
And what mm -hmm. Kendrick means by that is Drake will diss someone and only his intended target will pick up on it. Yep. And due to the fact that Kendrick is mirroring his style and writing from Drake's perspective on a timestamp titled record, this first verse is riddled with shots at Drake that only he understands. Yep. And that's why the beginning of this record doesn't even sound like a diss mm. because he's writing in the style of Drake. There's no clear shots to us, but he's dissing Drake the way that Drake disses. And, and because Drake has been at about. this pizzeria in Brooklyn before, this is just another clue that Kendrick has given us that he's writing this verse from Drake's perspective. God, ha, my confession is yours. And now we get to the point where I feel Kendrick does indeed switch perspectives back to himself. So, okay. As it's at this moment where he starts to sing, and when you think about Drake's timestamp records, he doesn't really sing on those tracks at all. And it's here, I'm going to pause this reaction. Yeah. And please tune back in for part two. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to continue this uh, recording, but I'm going to split it into two pieces. Um, I'm going to post this one up on YouTube in a minute, and then in about an hour or two, post the second one. So I'm just going to continue from here. But yeah, if you guys are here, please subscribe, like, and share the content. It really helps me out. I'm going through a little down patch in my stuff right now. I don't know what's going on, but it's all good. We push through. And um, come back again to see part two. Um, thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Real talking. And I will see you guys on the next one.